whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will begin. If you are in possession of any type of electronic device, we ask that you place that device on silence. If you have to hold conversation, we ask you to exit the gallery on the double side of the double doors to hold said conversation as the recording system is very sensitive and will pick up any and all conversation. At this time, the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City is in session. Mr. Chairman, I call the first case, the 11 a.m. case, Ronald Passad. Excuse me, Mr. Page, before you do that, can we take up the motion from last hearing? The motion for reconsideration. Motion for reconsideration? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, is anybody here on the motion for reconsideration filed by Mr. Kadensky? Okay. Uh, the board's been presented with a motion to reconsider the decision from our uh, hearing conducted on May 19th in a matter of the Board of Liquor License Commissioners versus Frederick Allen, Park Reed, Common Inc., trading as the drinkery. Um, the, uh, the commissioners have received the motion and an additional motion for reconsideration <coughs> as well as um, an opposition to the motion that was filed by um, Becky Witt on behalf of the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association, Inc., and a reply that was filed by Mr. Kadensky uh, to the opposition. And we're uh, prepared to rule on the motion at this time. Uh, under our rules, um, the Board of Liquor License Commissioners can grant a motion for reconsideration if it determines uh, based on the um, materials presented on the motion that the original decision was the product of fraud, surprise, mistake, inadvertence, or that there's some new or different factual situation exists which would justify a different uh, conclusion than the one that was reached at the prior hearing. Um, I've had the opportunity to review the materials that were submitted by counsel for both sides, and I am inclined to, dec um, to deny the motion. I did not find sufficient grounds uh, to grant the motion. Now, <coughs> ask the other commissioners to uh, place their rulings on the record as well. Okay, I looked at everything as well, <coughs> and <coughs> the um, what concerned me the most um, through the motions was the um, signing of the application uh, by uh, Jason Curtis, who's a licensee, which is not permitted by our rules. And that's not such a huge problem because there were far more than the 10 required signatures, even if you take him out. But Mr. Curtis testified at length about um, concerns involving the drinkery. And he's not just a licensee, he's a competing licensee. Um, he holds a license for, oh God, I'm forgetting the name of the hotel, but, it, but it's nearby in the same area, Mount Vernon neighborhood. Hotel Indigo. Hotel Indigo. And I know Mr. Curtis, I've known him for a number of years, and his testimony was uh, very persuasive for me. Um, I feel that we should not have received that testimony per our rules, that he was not permitted to participate as a licensee, but he did anyway. Um, for that reason, I feel it's only um, fair. Um, to grant the motion for reconsideration. And so I do support um, the, um, I, I would grant the motion for reconsideration for that reason. Mr. Greenfield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I uh, am uh, in agreement with Commissioner Moore uh, in granting the motion for reconsideration. I was in the minority in, uh, in in uh, not supporting the protest for renewal and supported the protest or supporting the renewal of the drinkery. Uh, I too am um, uh, concerned uh, that uh, Mr. Curtis's uh, testimony occurred. I do think it's in violation of the rule 10301. And for those reasons, uh, I too grant the motion for reconsideration. It would appear then that our decision has been reversed. Um, and that the renewal will be granted. Um, I, can I just do a, a footnote, if, if I might? And it's not to say that there aren't problems at the drinkery. The testimony from um, the others, other than Mr. Curtis, did um, certainly amplify problems 
um, and the you know things that definitely need to be addressed uh, very very quickly, or else they will be back in front of us. But for the reason I've already said, I do support the the, the grant. Okay, Mr. Chairman, if I could just add as well, I, I agree with Commissioner Moore. I, I, while I was in the minority uh, initially on the 19th, I am uh, very concerned about how uh, the drinkery is operated. And as I said uh, a few weeks back, uh, I do not would I would not like to see Mr. Uh, uh, the operator back before this uh, this body again for any violation. Okay, uh, that takes care of that matter, Mr. Page. We can move on to today's docket, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We call the 11 a.m. case, licensee Ronald Prasad, MVP Entertainment, LLC, trading as Club 347, located at 347 North Calvert Street. <clears throat> this is a Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, here for protest of renewal under Article 2B, Section 10-301A. On Thursday, April the 28th, 2016, the board held a public hearing for the purpose of postponing this case until this date and time. The license holder, represented by counsel, was present and agreed. All parties testifying, please come forward and raise your right hand. Uh, first, before you do that, can counsel uh, identify themselves for the record, please? Apparently, I'm not speaking into this. Would counsel please identify themselves for the record? Uh, James Bragdon for the Protestant M Mercy Medical Center. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Andrew B. Saller, S-A-L-L-E-R, on behalf of Mr. Prasad, on the licensee. Good morning. Mr. Saller, you filed a motion to dismiss. Could we wish it to be heard on that? Uh, Your Honor, I believe we have reached an agreement, actually, with the licensed protesters, Your Honor, if we could resolve Can this. Can you effect. share that with us? Yes. I, I'll go through the terms. We reached this uh, outside, and Mr. Saller will correct me if I've misstated any of the terms. Uh, Mercy has agreed to withdraw its protest. Um, the licensee has agreed to move from its current premises within six months, so by December 2nd, 2016. During that period, the licensee may continue operation at its current location. Uh, Mercy agrees to abate the rent for the, Mercy is actually the landlord for the licensee as well. Mercy agrees to abate the rent for the licensee during the remaining lease term. In addition to the abatement of rent, Mercy has agreed to pay an additional $20,000 to the licensee to allow them to move to a new location. The payment will be made within 45 days of this agreement. Uh, Mercy and licensee will attempt to enter into a formal written agreement with the understanding that the term sheet we intend to sign today will be enforceable if we cannot reduce the agreement to further writing. Um, that Mercy asks that licensee will comply with local laws and the regulations of the board during the remaining lease term. And Mercy asks that if the licensee stays past the move out date of December 2nd, 2016, Mercy can bring a tenant holding over action for possession of the property. And are you going to provide the board with the formal written agreement? Yes. Uh, if Mr. Saller, if I've accurately reduced this, um, we can either provide the term sheet, which we intend to sign today, or what we intend to do is do a formal agreement. I'd like to have both if you could. If you're going to sign a term sheet today and put <coughs> it in the record here today and then submit later your formal written agreement so that's part of the record? We would have no objection to that course of action. Okay. Now, yours was the only protest, I believe. Is that correct? So does that um, uh, end that matter as far as the board is concerned, Mr. Page? Uh, it, procedurally, uh, I believe that it's not permitted to withdraw a protest of renewal, but we would need to go on the record, call the cases we have done, that you would um, be asked to present your evidence as to why there should not be a renewal, whatever that is. And here it sounds like there would be no evidence. And then you would put on your evidence of why there should be uh, the renewal and we would make a decision. Is Mr. That, Akras. Do I have that fairly accurate? That's fairly accurate and then give an opportunity if there's anybody else in the gallery. That was my like concern because I, I remember the case that said forward. that that's why I asked if there were any others. But is there anyone else here present on this case who wishes to be heard? Okay. Um, so, Council, is there anything that you want to present before the board with respect to the protest that's here? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, we will not be presenting any evidence. Okay. Um, and I assume you don't want to provide any defense at that point. Uh, no, Your Honor. I would, <laughs> I would submit on the lack of evidence in my motion to dismiss and ask this honorable board dismiss the protest. Um, well, uh, can we dismiss this subject to their agreement? You have 
uh, make a decision in terms of whether you're going to renew the license or not renew the license. Okay. That's the only question before the board right now. Well, uh, based on what I've heard, I'm, I would vote to renew the license. I vote to renew the license. Um, and again, another footnote, what was alleged in the protest is concerning, but it sounds as though you've reached some agreement to address those concerns. And it's um, hope that you'll be able to comply with those agreements. I vote to renew the license as well. Okay, license will be renewed, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And please uh, submit those papers when you get a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, according to our docket, when's our next hearing? I think the next case wasn't set until 1.30. 1.30. And so no one's here, I assume, for that. So we'll recess until 1.30. The board is a recess until 1.30. I think I might go see my daughter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will begin. Mr. Chairman, I call the 1.30 p.m. case, Licensee, Weston Harlan and Brittany Harlan, 400 West 23rd Street, Inc., trading as W.C. Harlan, 400 West 23rd Street. This is a Class D, beer, wine, and liquor license, here for protest of renewal under Article 2B, Section 10-301A. On Thursday, April the 28th, 2016, the board held a public hearing for the purpose of postponing this case until this date and time. The license holder, represented by counsel, was present and agreed. All parties testifying, please come forward and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Oh. Would each of you individually identify yourselves for the record, please? Hi, Carl Stokes, Baltimore City Council, 12th District, uh, the district in which this particular establishment is. Good afternoon, Councilman Stokes, and you folks? Hi, Lane Harlan, owner of W.C. Harlan. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is William Bauer. I work with W.C. Harlan in Clavel. Good afternoon. And Council? Abraham Hurdle on behalf of W.C. Harlan, uh, Lane, Brittany Lane Harlan, and uh, Weston Harlan. Weston Harlan couldn't be here today because I believe he has a basic training. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so. Is there anyone here on behalf of the protest? Um, what time is it? It's 1.30. I can probably explain the proffer if, if I may. Please. Um, the, after the protest was filed, the councilman graciously got both sides together. and We met, I want to say about a month ago, um, and it appears that all of the differences that we've had have been resolved, um, if I may approach. I have a copy that whatever for everybody. So this is a letter from one of the local community groups in support. And attached to it are, I believe it's seven or eight signatures um, of individuals who signed the original protest. Um, the reason we didn't get everyone to sign it at the community meeting was because I ran out of sheets, which is why one of them is signed four times. Um, at the meeting, it was unanimous that nobody wanted to see the bar closed and that everybody wanted to see it remain open. Um, in fact, when I sent my uh, objection and request for dismissal the other day, Mr. Viles responded uh, graciously via email indicating that he signed the form and had no desire for things to proceed forward. Uh, let me make sure I have the language correct. Um, he had received a lot of emails. I'm not sure he was pleased with that. I signed the protest withdrawal form you gave me and returned it to you. For what reason are you still contacting me about this matter? Let me be perfectly clear. I, John Viles, 417 West 23rd Street, have withdrawn my protest and have no interest whatsoever in any further reactions, any further actions regarding 400 West 23rd Street. Um, and here's that email. And was Mr. Mr. Viles is the first signer. I see that. And was he the person who organized the others? I, I'm not sure who organized it. I, I believe Mr. Viles and his <laughs> wife. Uh, I don't want to speak incorrectly, but I believe they were the leaders, organizers, perhaps, would be the best way to describe it. Well, let's make this part of the record, please, sure. as, as well as the, uh, the other document. I, I can give him my <coughs> an extra copy. I certainly can extra provide extra it. I have an extra copy. Thank you. Okay. Do the other commissioners have any questions? Um, I don't have any questions. Just a comment. Um, 
maybe there's a question. You said that the councilman got the parties together. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us a little bit more about how that happened and like what happened? Because I don't sure. think I've ever heard that. Sure, the uh, councilman uh, called the office, asked if we would sit down and meet with them. Um, and I, I would anticipate that the same call went to Mr. Viles and some of the members of the community. Um, the members of the community had been summoned previously. Everyone who signed it had been summoned to the initial hearing. Um, and I think everyone was trying to avoid a situation where these people had to take a time off from work to come in here and testify. We met at First Modern. Is it First Modern? Modern? Price Modern. Price Modern. Price Modern. They deserve all the credit. They have a beautiful furniture store. <laughs> they have an area upstairs where they allowed us to use deep into the evening. Um, and the, the concern seemed to be about a previously <coughs> filed, I'm going to make sure that it's clear, legally previously requested uh, plan for outdoor table service that had gone to the zoning board. Um, they were, the intent of the licensee was to withdraw that. It hadn't been formally withdrawn. That created some confusion because there's a playground uh, nearby the bar. There's never been an issue with the bar and the playground. Neighbors expressed some concerns regarding people sitting outside, even if there was going to be a fenced-in area. Um, at that meeting, we made it perfectly clear that there was going to be no further plans for outdoor table service uh, now or in the future, to my knowledge. Okay. Um, so, Councilman, you, uh, your ex reaction to the meeting was that everyone was satisfied at the end of it? Absolutely. I, I, uh, the establishment, uh, when it came into the neighborhood, had the complete support of uh, just about every neighbor. Uh, so the people who actually live next door to the establishment and uh, in the surrounding uh, block uh, were all in agreement and, uh, and then they have served the community very well and, um, and, and so I, when I heard that there was a protest, I was curious why there would be a protest uh, because everyone was getting along with it. So I asked uh, both council the establishment owners and the community, if we could all get together and, and talk about whatever uh, the issue might be. And in the meeting, just as council said, uh, people were concerned uh, about the request for outdoor seating. Not that they were pro or con, but they were concerned about it. And they had a miscommunication that the only way to have a conversation was to protest the yeah. license, unfortunately. Uh, but when we came together, you know, to a person, they said, we do not want the establishment closed. Matter of fact, almost to a person, pretty much, uh, said, we want the establishment. We think it's great, and we want it. And so when we left the meeting, people said, I'm withdrawing. Um, just uh, let me sign off. And, and what, that's what happened. Mr. Vowles, if I might, uh, was the lead, I wouldn't call him the organizer, but he was the lead who did go around to get their signatures originally. And, um, and you have his uh, letter, uh, uh, memo, says, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I and this no meeting occurred on or around April 28th? Uh, that sounds about The original right. hearing, I think, was right. scheduled for April 27th to 28th. We had a meeting the night before the originally scheduled protest hearing. Okay. Um, right. As I recall. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the last thing I'd love to mention is that the bar does a lot for the neighborhood. They've never had any violations to my knowledge. Um, and it's my understanding they've been cited in many magazines uh, as award winning and they do amazing craft cocktails. Um, it's a nice little bar. Lane has been recommended as the top 40 under 40 individual in the city. Is that right? Um, and they do a really good job. They have a Mexican restaurant down the street, Clavel, also excellent. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything? I do not. Before we vote. Nice commercial. <laughs> One TV. Val, <laughs> doing his job. Um, uh, having heard the evidence and uh, the fact that there does not appear to be any contest to the renewal at this point, I would vote to renew the license. I join. I, I agree as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioners. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yep. And I guess we're adjourned until 2 30. <laughs> yeah, we got to do. Mediation we talked about earlier. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. why I wanted that's to have it amplified. That's yeah, that's, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Bring down the temperature, the mediation. Superb.
Wilkins Avenue, 21223, is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. This is a protest renewal under Article 2B, Section 10301A. Uh, as a reference point, on Thursday, April 28, 2016, the board held a public hearing for the purpose of postponing this case until this date and time. The license holder, represented by counsel, was present and agreed. Any individuals uh, who will be protesting this license should make their way to the front. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And you can put your laptop right there on that podium. Right here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. and Let's find a way to share. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very much. For all those individuals who will be testifying in this matter, will you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Well, help me God. Yes. yes. And with that, Mr. Chair. Okay. Council, we identify yourself for the record, please. Uh, for the record, Gary Maslin, on behalf of the uh, licensee, Your Honor. Okay. Um, so, ma'am, what is your name, please? My name is um, Maria Whitehead Moses. Okay. And, Ms. Moses, can you talk into that little thing there? Okay. So, we picked up on the record. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, what would you like to tell us but about? Judge, preliminarily, I'd have a motion. Oh, didn't know that. Uh, we'd like to dismiss the uh, move to have the petition dismissed on the grounds that the um, Article 2B requires that a petition of protest be signed, signed, I emphasize, by at least 10 um, uh, individuals who are in close proximity to this establishment. A review of the protest, I direct your attention, if you don't have the protest to please we have it. look at it, you will note that almost all of the signatures on this um, all, all the names on this on on the first page of the signature are printed, printed, not signed. The law requires a protest of renewal to be signed by individuals, not printing a name. Um, for that, and if you look at the and, and I would ask you not to even consider the second page of the petition of protest because that does not have a heading on it. There's no reference as to what that represents. It is merely an attachment, uh, and we don't know when that was signed, what those people were signed, and further, again, it is replete with printing of signatures. Therefore, this petition of protest is deficient on its face and should not be considered by this board. Anything further? Not on that issue. I have another issue I'd, I'd raise. But um, the um, ma'am, can you give us some enlightenment about what uh, the attachment is? Did you did you collect these signatures? Uh, yes, and, okay. and with all due respect to uh, the council. Um, Let me ask you oh, a few and questions. I apologize to you. And okay. I'm not very good with. Uh, Let me just ask you a few yes, questions. Yes. Were you present when these people uh, put their names on uh, these yes papers? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. And were you, was the second page a part of the protest me. as well as the y first yes, page? Yes, and, and uh, it was, and I did read it for them and everything. But unfortunately, because of the postponement, postponement, everybody works with all due respect. I understand why they're not all here. And, and, and I understand the council wants to drop that. But anyway, with all due respect to them, uh, uh, it's not here about the petition. It's not here about the witnesses, about signatures. It's about performance. They didn't comply. Well, his, uh, he's making a very technical yes. uh, yeah. argument under the statute, and he's entitled to do that. Oh, um, yes, sir. Of course. Yes, sir. But um, I'm going to deny the motion. I think that um, lots and lots of people have their own ways of marking things, and you can sign with an X. <laughs> I think under our law, if you have uh, the inability Judge, to, I, to I, write out your I, name. I, if, I, if I continue on. on. As, as to the signatures itself, my client um, representative went out and solicited and spoke with various individuals who allegedly signed this petition. We have verification from several of those individuals that they did not sign the petition. It's a fraudulent petition that's submitted to this board. Um, specifically, um, Ms. Riley, 
signed a statement saying that she never signed the petition. Uh, Ms. Riley's signature Nancy, on here? Nancy Payne. I'm sorry, is Ms. Riley's signature on here? Uh, Ms. Riley don't see it. is, uh, pardon me. Where is it? I don't see Ms. Riley, but Nancy Payne mm -hmm. is an individual that uh, is, I believe, on, on here. And she indicated that she never assigned the uh, petition. Here's a statement from uh, Nancy Payne and Ms. Riley saying they never uh, signed the uh, petition. Um, My client went out and um, Deborah Mellon, um, I believe her name is on here, um, has signed something, signed a statement saying, we want the store to stay open, another individual on there. Um, the uh, 430, 430, 421 Vincent Street is an empty, abandoned residence that's listed on here. Um, Jack Hook. Excuse me, where is 421 Vincent Street on here? Oh, down at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, that is an empty building. Uh, uh, well, uh, Jack Hook. I mean, you're testifying, counsel, but do we have any proof of that? Well, if I could offer this, Your Honor, it's, um, it's a statement that reflects the different names my client went out, and there are signatures on that, Your Honor. You'll see that the uh, that that. Is, does contain signatures. And I'd like, with all due respect to Your Honor and Your Honor's view of the statute, and I know we're looking at technicalities, but it requires a signature. Those are the signatures. What she has on her petition do not re represent any form, way, shape, or form of signature. And as I indicated, I, I wouldn't um, rule in your favor on that, but if you should be unsuccessful here, you may be able to convince the court to rule in your favor on that. Um, and th if you want to submit these, you may do that. What, yes, we like that. We'll, we'll make I'd both like of the <laughs> parts of the record. And if I could have a motion for discovery for his, his signatures, and with all due respect, Your Honor, I'm a crime watch. I've come a long ways, and everybody went around. I read a couple of times, and this is what's going on. Everybody signed. Well, I mean, th so, their names are on both things, so yes, yes, apparently so they'll sign anything. But yes, sir. yes, I know. <laughs> uh, but 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 I went. I took my time and everything. Uh, okay, uh, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Yes. You had something else, Mr. Massel? Yes, yeah, so we have photographs of, of, of buildings You're in the area sir. where they're. Um, These are. And let me pull myself four twenty one. Uh, signatures were taken. Well, I is it possible that the signatures own these buildings? I mean, we don't know anything about this, but you're welcome to put it in the record. They're not Thank here you. to tell us. Um, so they can all be part of the record. Uh, uh, Additionally, Your Honor, we move to have the petition dismissed on the ground that it lacks uh, specificity. Um, if you look at the um, allegations uh, made, um, it, it says that they promised to put a window, which hasn't been complied with as part of the getting a license approved. This is brought to our attention, brought to our attention that the business is letting uh, persons deal drugs on or outside of the business. It is brought to our attention uh, that 12 year olds are good. It is brought to our attention. Uh, these are not um, um, specific al 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 allegations. And it says we don't like a liquor established in that area to begin with. It's a conclusionary statement. Um, and, and then it goes on to below is a person address who have signed this petition. And as I've said before, we take issue over the fact that they have, in fact, signed the um, uh, petition. Um, um, Anything further? No, Judge, there's no I would agree with you that it's not artfully drafted. I don't think that we require the community members to have counsel or to have things drafted in strictly legal terms if it turns out that there are not, at, at the end of the evidence, specific contentions. I suspect that you will be successful in your renewal. Uh, but I'm going to deny the motion on the basis that you've presented it. Um, are we ready to proceed? 
Governor, I have um, four witnesses that are supposed to be here. They're not here, but, but we're going to start with we, yeah, we can start with that side. Okay. Hopefully, we'll show. So, uh, ma'am, please state your name one more time. Yes, my name is Maria Consuelo Whitehair Moses. Okay, Ms. Moses, uh, where do you live? I live in 1621 Ramsey Street. My family's been there for 45 years. And how close is that to uh, this establishment? Two doors. Okay, and what would you like to tell me uh, that is relevant to what time period has your uh, client owned this license? Um, probably less than a year. Well, let's talk about the last year. What can you this tell me about year. complaints in the last year? Yes, it's been. Uh, and try to be specific yes. about when. Bear with me. Okay. Um, and, and please talk into that yes, mic. <laughs> yes, okay. It's been uh, drug dealers, testings, juveniles coming in and now coming from school. How, why? Because I know all of them and I know what's going on. I have cameras. I have wire on top of them, one camera. And specifically, one that was very worried, and I'm still worried, on, on January 30, 2016, there's a big drug dealer. He came, uh, started calling me names, kicking the door. It took me a while to get dressed because I'm getting very old, and I was in the hospital for three months. I'm trying to recuperate myself. And uh, so he, I look in the camera, I said, wait, stand by, I'm gonna call the police. So he comes, he goes in the Wilkins cut rate, which I have the video, and uh, the, Respectfully, the lady gives her a two by four. I swear, I didn't. Excuse, excuse me. Don't two by four. He comes out and starts threatening my son, and 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 you know, and then brought another guy that had a knife. Uh, like I said, meanwhile I was getting dressed because I'm getting old. Meanwhile, why then, why did this drug dealer come to your door? Because we have problems with them, uh, and, and they don't like me because I'm, they, uh, they, I'm I'm a crime watch. But and what I, did what did that have to do with the establishment? Because he went in there and got the two by four there. Oh. And then he went back and take, took it back. Okay, so but it had nothing to do with their liquor sales. Well, no, not with their liquor sales, but, but I mean, it could have been a gun next time. So I go in and I ask the lady, the two by four after he left her there, because I was waiting for the police, it was right behind her, her, uh, her counter. No, she shh, bullshit. Shh, 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 please, Ladies, please. you're going to have to wait please. until your I'm turn. Sorry. So, you know, so it, I'm worried now. You don't have to watch my back every day. I do go behind the gangs and the drug dealers, juveniles, everybody yeah. knows me. I've been in sitting paper. Uh, I'm doing well, the best I can. Well, I appreciate that, but yes. can you, is there anything else you okay, can tell now, me about and also this? Also, the girls, we have a school across the street. Uh, I know the girls because uh, they were raised, and I know all, their, the, all the girls. What girls? Uh, the, the young girls. Girls like, from the school? Yes, yes. Okay. The young. One especially, her name is uh, Alice. Please don't use And him. I call her Shirley Temple because she looks like a Shirley Temple. And uh, they were coming from school every day and, and, and coming and buying cigarellos. How do I know that? Because they sit down and Jackson. roll the cigarellos. Right in, the, in front of the well, and all over. Matter of fact, I have a paper that uh, they did that before, and they got warned. They did the other people. I have the paper I can show to you if you want to. That they were warned before about that. And I went. And when was that? Uh, this is. It's, I, it's, I think it was the tenth. October tenth, two thousand fifteen. Thank you. The year two thousand fifteen. Thank you. But that was only one. This was every single day. So I go in there and I say, you can't do that. Uh, I said, first you haven't complied. You cannot sell to these kids or anything like this. Uh, and the, mainly it was for the young lady that she's not here, the, the wife of the gentleman. And then, uh, and then I asked him what was going on, why nothing has been done. I need them to work with us. I'm willing to work with them. And also, no, no response. But I mean, it's, this is every single day. So I called the mother, and the grandmother said, these girls are here. You need to stop it. They're in my cameras. And, uh, uh, so after that, they don't sit down. But that was after, I mean, after I complained, and then we started doing this. And they still go there, but they, they go around. But I mean, you know, I mean, I'll, and I'll take an oath. And I did call police. I, I let the police know. Uh, I did call 411. Uh, the uh, deputy that we have now told me to call, follow procedure, and I did. And uh, the, the officer said, just let them get comfortable, and then we'll, we'll catch them. Uh, okay. So that's what. What's you have going an, on. another, uh, any other examples you want to give us? I, I can, I can, this is filled with every single day. I, I, like I said, if I would have been. I'm getting old, but I mean, I can give you, if you give me another hearing, I'll give you at least 20, 30 samples. That's right. <laughs> uh, my cameras are right there. I, my, and I have very sophisticated cameras, the IMAX. My, my cameras are more sophisticated than the police department. When they come and they have shootings, which we've had that block and everything, they come and borrow my cameras. Okay. Uh, I spent almost $8,000 on eight cameras. Very sophisticated, yes. All right. Now, yes. now this lawyer is going to have an opportunity to ask you questions, okay? Yes, so please answer his questions. Madam, you're in fact a convicted drug dealer yourself, yes, are you I not? Yes, I am. 
Yes, I am. And I apologize for bringing all the, by the way, and I apologize to the state of Maryland. I apologize to Baltimore City bringing all the drugs. Now I'm in the other side. I clean up neighborhoods. I don't get paid. And I, and I sleep one or two hours a day. Sometimes I don't sleep because I made a promise, and that's why I decided to stay in Baltimore. Okay. Yes. You were convicted as a felon, were you not? Yes, I, yes, I was. Yeah. You received a sentence of 12 years, didn't yes, you? I, yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, I did, yeah. and that was the first for me from Columbia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, I guess, a fine joy for them. Three million dollar bail went straight to just for twelve years. Yes, I did. And, and you live across the street, is that right? I live two doors. Yes, sir. All right. You weren't inside the store at any time, were you? I go in the store many times. You go in the store many times. Many times. Yeah. I be, and the reason is because my husband likes to drink, and he gets the cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. And, uh, you know, many times I went to them, and, and I spoke to him, and I said, look, why don't we fix this up? And he said they would run out of money. When are you going to fix? When are you going to put cameras? We, we have a lot of bad people coming in and out. I don't have money. The same. So I did talk to them many times, and I was very courteous. Many times they put a car, uh, you know, for wait, cleaning. Yeah, you have I'm to wait sorry. for a question. Okay. I've done Anything, enough with them for cleaning any further and uh, no. help them out with that. Okay. Yes. Count, commissioners have any questions? No, no questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, does this lady want to testify? Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm the president of the. Can you step up to the microphone, please, ma'am, and just state your name? Can I give this letter? Nancy McCormick, and I'm the president of the community association in our neighborhood. Okay, Ms. McCormick, and where do you live? I live at 404 South Gilmore Street. And how far is that? That's around the corner. Okay, and what would you like to tell us? Uh, I would just like to say that. Um, I didn't see the goings on, but I do not like the idea of minors going in a liquor store. There is no need for them to go inside one. There are two other convenience stores on the other corners. There should be a sign, no minors allowed. And if uh, drug dealers are going in and out of there, we do have trouble in our neighborhood with drugs going on. They don't, they don't need to be uh, antagonizing Ms. Moses because she is trying to clean up the neighborhood along with our association. We don't get much help from the police department or anything else. So, I mean, she does have the camera. She does see what's going on. Okay. Thank you. Just a minute, please. First of all, Mr. Maslin, did you see the letter that uh, Ms. Moses offered? And I apologize. Yes, sir. You want one for you, sir? Uh, sure. Yes, Thanks. please. Extra. I'll let you mark. The one the one yeah, let's yeah, mark it, please. <laughs> it will be received. Do you have questions for Ms. McCormick? Um, you've never personally had any problem with, the, with these folks that run the store, is that correct? No, because I don't go there. You don't go there. All right. Any further questions? Okay. And, ma'am, did you want to testify? Yes. Yes, you do. I assume the commissioners don't have any questions for Ms. McCormick. Mm -hmm. I do not. Thank you. My name is Josephine Battaglia. I'm president of Restivo Square and been that way for a long time. I've been helping out in the neighborhood with several things, uh, basically the housing, and I'm cleaning out the housing on a volunteer basis for uh, Father Pascal at St. Benedict's for two of the ladies that passed away, and now I'm cleaning out Ms. Locke's house. Uh, for her and I'm power of attorney for her. I'm sick and tired of going down there. I've been down there for almost Wait a minute. When you say down there, you have down to tell me where to you mean. Okay. New Southwest Mount Clare, Gilmore Street and Ramsey Street. Um, and I can tell you a whole lot of things that would take all day. So I know you don't want to hear all this. But I, I'm down there quite often. Sometimes they have to work sometimes on the weekend, usually every Saturday. I'm cleaning out Miss Locke's home. Uh, I've only gone in the store a few times, but I have personally witnessed children going in there, young people going in there, teenagers going in there, and young people that we know that deal with drugs. And I'm sick of it, and I'm sick of it in my own neighbor, but especially here. They should not do this. Children, they sell liquor in there. They should not have children anywhere near the place not in it, not around it, not standing out front. I never see them come out and chase the kids. And young boys that de deal with drugs and all their honoriness, they're down there, and they give me a hell of a bad time. Pardon my language. And they do. In th fact, I took one of the kids, Joseph Riddick, to the court it was about a year ago. All I did was get a peace order. Now, I don't even live in that neighborhood. I go down there and volunteer my time and energy, 
and it's not fair to me or any of the neighbors that live there, several of the neighbors who may not have been approached to sign the petition, and I did sign the petition, and it is my signature. Um, it, it, it's just being run badly, and if Maria, I'm, I'm really upset that people are trying to put her down, sir, with all due respect to you as an attorney. Maria paid her dues. Maria has done more than the police ever have or ever will do to clean up that neighborhood, my neighborhood, and St. Benedict's neighborhood of drugs and drug dealers and drug trafficking and all that other baloney that goes on. Maria has been wonderful, putting herself at risk. She's been assaulted. She's been insulted. She's been accused. She got a, one of the drug girls put a shoe, a high heel shoe in her forehead a few years ago. They treat her badly, and Maria does let all of them know so Maria's not sneaking up on them. You're on camera. You come out here, you behave, or you're on the camera. Maria does have them on the camera. I don't camera. want to cut you off, but do you have anything more about this particular establishment? Well, this establishment, I usually don't go in there. I only went in there a few times recently because I've been sick and I only needed cough drops or a soda you know, or a bottle of water. Only a few times, maybe three, four times. But I can see from Wilkins Avenue and Vincent Street where we were putting the bags and I probably have to apologize to you because I did put the trash bags along your store, but I told you I would move them because we are cleaning out the property down there. So I apologize to you. Okay. So we thought we understood that the neighbors were supposed to tell you that. Okay. Say anything else? Okay. I, I just don't think they should be allowed to have children in there. And I think when the drug boys are out there and some of these dumb, dumb girls who are ruining their life, I think they need to call the police and say, Vamoose, get out of here. Okay. They need to chase them, and you don't chase them. All right, well, that's just answer questions. And they shouldn't let these drug boys in there. I mean, I know they're running a business, but you're going to run a business off these boys that got this money. I call it dirty money what they've got. So they shouldn't let these drug boys in there, and they certainly shouldn't let any child in there, no matter how little they are. Now, that Mennonite church and schools right across the street from their store, and I've seen the kids all hanging out there, and they should not be there. Okay. Should be a big sign, beware, all, right. all over the place. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Maslin, do you have questions for Ms. Battaglia? How far away from this store do you live, ma'am? I live up on Frederick Avenue. How I don't far, live how, in the neighborhood. You don't even live in the neighborhood. No, but I work in the neighborhood, and I'm okay. three, four days a week. And you, you patronize the store? No, only a few times, maybe three times. Okay. And you always found it to be clean and orderly when you went in there? Well, it's clean. I don't say that about them, but... Mm -hmm. um, I'm complaining about the young people going in and the young people outside, both the teenagers and both the good kids. Mm. It is not right for them to be exposed to liquor or anything else or drugs or anything else, and drug boys are right there. Mm. And they don't chase them. I don't see them, anybody coming out and say, get out of here. Right. I don't see them doing that. All right, thank you. Right. Any, right. any questions for Ms. Battaglia? Yeah. I, I just had a, a couple. You said that you don't really go into the store, but you did go in recently, recently. and you purchased, I think, uh, water, a soda, or cough drops. I, I'm not sure really what I purchased, but because I, I just had to get out of there. Sure. It's hardly ever anybody. It's not a heavily used store, but the kids go in there. It's something so my question, gravitating about what's ever in that store. Well, it might be the soda, chips, candy. Do they sell those things? As far as I knew, yes. So far as you know. So, soda. so mm -hmm. it's not just liquor. No, but it's okay. the bulk of it. Okay, but they do sell, obviously they sell other yes, things. Yes, but children shouldn't be in there because people drink still want chips. Children okay. should not be in that environment and, or and exposed to it. And you know, we, we're not, Okay. you know, really. I know. Um, I know. Okay. And you've never, my next question, have you ever seen this licensee sell alcohol to a minor. No, I didn't see and that. And you've never seen that? No, okay. I didn't and say that. No, I didn't. Okay, that's I really... I hardly ever used it, but they're inside. The kids go in and out, and the teenagers outside, in and out, in and out. Okay. Um, and have it's not right. Not I could go on and on about okay. Baltimore and the neighborhoods and the, the neighborhood, I mean, the the little shops that mm -hmm. sell all manner of things. And 
the activity and the kids that go in and the adults that go in. And the only really concern is whether or not alcohol is being sold to, to minors. And your answer is no. I didn't see it. You did not see that. Now, the next question, have you ever seen um, sales of drugs in this establishment? No, I haven't personally seen that. Okay. All right. But it's it's a temptation inside and out. All right. But we, we can't punish people for temptation. If we could, there'd be a whole lot of people punished all right, <laughs> all right. Um, thank you uh, <laughs> before you proceed mr i forgot to show the flashlight that, that was my main thing the thing is i was just overwhelmed with everything a flashlight the flashlight to see the gentleman the, the witness that's the witness the drug dealer that's the one in the flashlight with the two by four he's right here okay uh, and it's it, it's very important the flashlight will show you everything um, and it will show me this lady handing him a yes, two by four. It will, show, it will show the drug dealer coming in, which is Mr. Martini Barra Diaz. He got convicted. He he does work sometimes. So he has a front. But what does it have to do with the store? Because he went inside. He got the two by four there. Went outside. Came into uh, Torres house and went inside and left the two by four there. I went inside. I understand, but I went inside and the two by four was right behind the ladies. Shame on her. But how do we know that he didn't just go in and take it? No, 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 because it's here. No, mm -hmm. you, if you see my tape, you're going to see the other. There was a, there were three guys. One was there, one like this, and said, go in. And then uh, and then he, he brought it out. Okay, but did you see anyone give it to him? No, I didn't see anything. But, it's, it's the, but when I went inside, when I called the police, police, the police report, this, uh, I went inside. He went back in inside, and I seen it, and I went. I spoke to the, the, the lady, as a matter of fact. Speak to me. Shame on you, man. I God bless you. you didn't and uh, it was right behind her counter, right where the, where the thing is. Okay. So if not, then the police will never give me a report. Mr. Madison. Yeah. Can you I'm sorry. Turn his phone off and have her talking. Okay. Okay. So this is the but you'll have and this is the gentleman right here, the one who gave us a hard time, and he is a, a, a drug dealer so still active. Could no we just ask you to turn your cell phone me. off? Not put it on mute. Turn it off. Okay. So I have to say this because. Yeah. Uh, all three of you ladies have made generalized complaints yes, about the neighborhood, about the drug dealing that goes on in the neighborhood, about the fact that young children are exposed to things that they shouldn't be exposed to uh, in the neighborhood. But I haven't heard any specific complaint about a violation of the liquor laws by these individuals. Well, 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 and I apologize if I may, if, if you may. Uh, the girls that were sitting down there, you can see them rolling the paper. I mean, where's my picture? You got it? Here, hold on. But what does that have to that do shows with that them? They come in there and bought the cigarette, the cigarella. These are 11, 12 year girls from school across the street. That's illegal to sell cigarettes or cigarellas. Um, call them cigarillos, the cigarellas, the ones. So that, that is your specific complaint but about that's those? One of the ones, and plus the one from the two by four from the drug dealer here. I don't really understand what that has to do. Even if he got it from the store, what does that have to do with their liquor license? But, 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 but um, the reason I'm worried, sir, is it could have been a gun. Well, I understand that, too. No, it could have uh, been a gun. <laughs> but, but we're here because they want to renew a liquor license. Yeah, but and then, and that didn't comply. What about the windows? That didn't comply. All the they fixed in two days. But the the windows, that didn't comply. I don't want to fix the window. give you a hard time, man, but the law doesn't require, the liquor law doesn't require them to fix a window. Yeah. It's That's so we need the specific issue ago. that we have before us so is the sale of cigarettes to minors, apparently. Two, three, day, two, three months year. Okay, so Mr. Maslin, what do you have on the cig sale of cigarettes to minors? Well, preliminarily, Judge, I, I have uh, a petition in support of the renewal of this liquor license signed by over 400, I believe there's 400 signatures there. In the okay, minute. we'll make this part of the record. Not exact. In support of the renewal of the, the license. As to the specific allegations of sale of, of cigarellos, there hasn't been a specific exact testimony related that cigarellos were actually observed being sold. Oh, no, that's true, but they said, but there's a reasonable inference on the, the September the 10th, 2015, with the picture of the girls in front rolling them, that they purchased them there, so. Well, that, that with all I'm not the, saying it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt or anything, but there's some inference there. The, it's a blurry photograph. You can't <laughs> see anything in that, in that photograph other than someone sitting on a step. I, 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 with all due respect, I think your, your eyes might be better than mine, Judge, but but I, I don't see anything related, related to that. You don't have any inference that anything was purchased inside the store. If, in fact, they were engaged in rolling something, that doesn't flow that it was bought inside the store. They could have had it in their pocket from some other, other location. But having said that, I'd offer my client 
who's the owner of the licensee. Would you state your name for the record? My name is Min Hyun Wang. Now, Mr. Wang, you own this, uh, your licensee, is that yes. correct? You, do you, have you ever sold any cigarellos to children? No, I did not. I swear to God. I swear right. to God. Do you sell them? We do sell them, but not in the minor. I always ask for the ID. No. <coughs> what, what is this? I don't even know what a cigarello is. Cigarello is uh, the, like a black and mild, something like that. The a black and mild, is that's a cigar? It's a cigar, cigar. It's a cigar. So you sell cigars, but mm. you don't sell them to minors. No, I do not. It's a tobacco product. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, is it like a, a blunt? Like the blunt. Yes. Yes. blunt. So it's like a Philly blunt. They would take the tobacco out and then yeah. stuff marijuana in it. Yes. And you sell the small cigars. The black and mild, uh-huh. Right, but you don't, do you sell rolling papers? No. Do you sell any drug paraphernalia? No. You do not? No, I did not. I swear to God, I did not. Do you sell marijuana clips? Do you sell little pipes? I'm just asking. I'm not accusing. I'm asking because that's one of the allegations. I don't understand what you're saying. No, I don't, I don't think it's an allegation. Uh, um, before this uh, lady talks, can I need her name? I don't. She's spoken several times and I don't have her name. So we just state your name for the record. Lee, L E Y, W E W E E. Okay. We have, just to clarify the record, we have a 311. Um, complaint about selling smoking paraphernalia to minors, and that's what I believe Commissioner Moore is referring to. It is, yeah. All right, those are all the questions I have. But Commissioner Greenfield? So you operate a convenience store, is that right? A convenience store and liquor store? Yes. And are they segregated? Are they separate in any way? Uh, the, the soda and chip is outside the door. Okay. And the, the beer cooler is inside, it's separate. It's mostly like a separate. But the old candy bar will be in the condom. Do you okay. have any do you have any employees or is it just only me and my wife and sometimes my aunt will be in the store. Okay. But no and, and how do how would a patron, how would a customer uh, buy cigarettes or cigars or anything? How how would they, is it behind the window, yeah, we have the we have the, the closet okay. and the small window open. Okay. Small window open. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you ever have any conversations with the members of the community? Have you ever met with them or had any discussions with them? I I, I always respect her. I say hi, Miss Maria, everything because I don't speak a lot of English. I don't want to get too much trouble. Just I just say hello and I didn't say anything. Mm. Are you? I always respect her. Okay. Uh, do you dispute the fact that there's drug activity in the area? Excuse me. I'm not saying that it's your fault. I'm just asking whether there is. Okay. Okay. We're doing business. We're also scared. We don't want to go out even. We always stay inside. And what percentage of your business is to children as opposed to adults? The sometimes they have a lot of kids coming. They steal the chick and steal the soda around the waist in that couple, couple of circle time. But at least like four, five, six children coming by starting a soda, chest candy. And sometimes they steal something. But but the, c the cigarettes, they're all behind. All behind the counter, not inside, not outside, mm, separately. Okay. Mm. okay. Is there anything else you would like to present, Mr. Maslin? Uh, yeah, I'd like to present Ms. Ms. Lee. Ms. Lee, state your name for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Lee Wee. Now, Ms. Wee, you, you collected the almost 400 signatures in support of this um, renewal of the license, is that correct? Yes. And you actually spoke with people that allegedly signed this petition? Yes. And you indicated that, um, can you tell Ms. Honor and the members of the uh, board um, which of these individuals did indicated to you that they did not sign that petition? You see, just to play it safe, I went to all of them who signed on that paper to reconfirm with them where they did sign and they really wanted the store to be, have no license, you see. And the other lot of signatures, 
all of them collected when all those customers come to the store to buy things. And they sign it there. So you see a long, long list. I see the list. Thank you. So the other list, which I think Mr. Marshall just gave to you with yellow marking. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, the one with the two. You're talking about the, the where with the two people said they didn't sign? Yeah, or the, can I have or this? Yeah, can I have this? this? Yes. So this one, I copied from here was there. So I went to each individual and said confirmation of petition. It means not, you see, I underlined this, not to approve. And then the behind one is just that confirm that they approve. You see? So these are the people there. And the first one here, you see this lady here at uh, Parish Street say, I want the store to stay open. So I say, if you want to stay open, can you just initial by the sign of the name? So just to make sure, you see, if you don't want it to open, just also sign there. So at least I know who are the people who don't want, and I, I know how many people. And then like this, this here, the, this lady here is staying too far away in Pigstown, far away from our store. So I couldn't get to there, you see. And now this one, this old lady here, she said, she didn't even go out of the house. She's, she's like a very old lady, like disabled. So she has a child a caretaker with her. So anyway, she signed, say, uh, she's against uh, having the liquor store. I said, it's okay, that's right. So she signed her name there again. And then this one here, he says that this 421 Vincent Street is an empty house. I have pictures of it. There's three houses. I saw the empty. pictures. It's vacant. And then I happened, to, this is the neighbor who signed for it. And then later, later the lady, who stay next door, say, this is my mother. And she said, I'll call my mother to verify. So this is the mother who verified it, that this house is hers, and she did not ask to sign the, the petition, not to renew the, the license. And the signature, in fact, is different from the one that is in here. You can see that it's different, you see? So I just want to verify to confirm that these are the genuine thing. And the next thing here, that Nancy Payne went to the house personally, and she was there with the daughter, and said, no, I want the store to be open. So again, she wrote something here saying that she did not sign not to renew the license, see? And these three are not, nobody responds. So I just tell you the address. And the other one here, he says, this guy says, I want the store to stay open. So he wrote it there, you see? I did not sign for no renewal, that's why he said. And this one here, again, the one next to our store, 1625, our store number, his sister's next to us, 1627. He said, I want the store to be open. So he, he signed here, you see? And this one, this guy was so angry. He said, this person do not live here. He's a resident in that house. So he just signed, you see, he's so big, he wrote, do not live here, you see? And then like these two, you see the same house. I went there about five times, and I always take pictures of the house. It looks like nobody's staying there, but there's a house. And then we have uh, pictures of the, uh, for the postman not to leave past the outside, something like that. I took pictures so that you can know it's there. And this one, this lady here. Those neighbors told me she's not staying here, she's staying Patrick Avenue, so far away. She's only a cleaning lady for these two store, at uh, these two buildings next to us. And that two buildings are up for auction. So I asked the lady who doesn't live next door, which is a person living there, and say, oh yeah, these two house, the sisters I think died or something, and then they were, house for auction, and this lady is a clean lady. I signed for it, and then she saw, she signed here to say that it's vacant, you see? This is what she did. And basically, you see, that's what I summarize, you see? How many people are for and all that? I mean, from those I went. Are you aware of other false allegations made by Miss Moses against other residents in that area? Oh, yes, plenty. Well, see, when I asked those people to come buy liquor, I say, do you know that Maria is telling me to close my store? I said, what? She's giving you trouble. See, she's giving everybody trouble. This is not the first time. I know. She's giving everybody trouble. So I tried to ask some of them to come. And then some of them couldn't make it because there's a timing on that, you see? Like this house at, oh, this the house at the top. Did you speak with police officers regarding complaints that she has made against yeah. other people? I went to talk. I, one time I called the police because of her. And the police advised me, you better get a restraining order against her, or she'll keep on coming. And they told me, I, I said, if I take a restraining order against her, how long does it take? Six months? Every six months I got renewed. And I did ask some of those people living around, they said, yeah, we did, we did. And there was one guy, one of this guy's partner, who did some work for me in the store, because I asked him to open a little hole on the door facing the main door. 
so the children cannot get right in because he keeps stealing things, you see. Then after he found out, she found out, she come and tell me, you know, these two are drug dealers. I said, what, they're just staying next door, you know, next, next block. So I just happened that it's just a small job. I'd rather that they do the job. Then I go and call other people. So they come and do the job, and after that, she told me that they are drug dealers. She said, next time you want anybody to do a job, just come and see me. I'll get you people who don't do drugs. And that's not right because who are you as a chemist who to get, right? Because it's just for convenience, it's a small job. And then that guy told me, his partner, he said, no, Mara, give me three, three problems. First thing, he called the police, say that I don't have a, my car parking outside my house at 409 South Gilmore. Doesn't belong to anybody. It's an abandoned car. So they try to throw away. So like Before we get off on a tangent, does this have anything to do with the... No, yeah. did, you ever, did you ever <laughs> give anybody a two-by-four? No, know? never. All right. Never. Because what happened? Can Have I say something? What happened on side. that day when it happened? I had three customers in front of me, in the counter, behind the counter. So this guy, he always come and buy liquor from uh, beer from me. So he, we got auto door. So he said, "Mama, open the door." So I thought he wants to buy beer. So I let him in with the auto door. He came in there. I think he went to the basement door, grabbed something. I didn't see what it was because I had three customers in front. Then he went out. Then I didn't know what happened outside. Only later on, then I found that there was some fighting between. Right. Kim and Maria. And then that's it. And okay. he didn't even come in and say that I got two by four behind my counter. Yeah. I don't keep those things behind my counter. It's don't in the basement. Else, what did you want to say, no, Ms. Sir, Moses? Yeah, 421, with all due respect, it was bought, but the reason they say it's vacant, uh, because they're doing it without permits. Yes, somebody lives there. 421 South Vincent. I do, uh, I'm a real estate. I know every house there is here. I, I, I'm a consultant. Uh, that's how I make my money, and uh, I'm in charge of 60, 70 properties for rental. So I know the house very well. And like I said, and I repeat myself, everybody there signed. Everybody signed there. Okay. Uh, well, everything is in evidence for both, on them. behalf of both. So we'll have to draw <laughs> issues of credibility on our own. I will never, never do that again, but, it's, I mean, like, but I mean, it's all, this is it's, it's, it's true. Okay. And like I said, I would like you to see this. That's the gentleman here. This is the one. Uh, yeah, so that's the first time he come on top of us. I call committee. Um, Mediation. I said, look, he lives here. See, we can do it. He never responded. You know, we're living there. I'm trying to, you know, yes, hey, what is your problem? Why are you cop kicking the door the second time? What's going on? He never responded to community mediation. I think community mediation is a very good program. But if he doesn't respond, there's nothing I can do. I understand. Yes. Um, does anybody else have anything no, further? I don't. Okay. Mr. Maslin, are we ready? Uh, I just offer this an inspection report that's in, in the record. Of a, uh, one of your inspectors was there in response to a complaint. I think it's the one we have. Um, the store owner asked for ID uh, uh, related to an alleged uh, a, a person that observed to, to verify that uh, he was of age. Inspector was able to observe manager asked for ID for the sale of alcoholic beverage to a possible minor owner has a separate window to sell grocery style items. What does that mean? Pardon me? What is the separate window to sell grocery style items separate from the liquor? Separate from the, from the alcohol. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. It's going to be received. Okay. Anything further? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Ms. Moses and Ms. McCormick and Ms. Battaglia, I just want you to understand that um, what we, we heard your testimony and we believe you, and it sounds as though you live in an area that's troubled. And it sounds as though children are exposed to things that are unfortunate there, both possibly drugs and smoking underage and probably causing trouble for some of the older citizens as well. Um, and I, I don't doubt that there's a lot of truth to that. Um, the problem that we have is that we're here on the issue of whether or not we can renew the license to this facility. And the only specific complaint tied to it, now, you know, uh, because you live there, you think that because there was an altercation with this young man in front of it, that it affects their license. But it really isn't technically, be but it isn't technically before our liquor board. Uh, uh, so I don't s believe there is sufficient evidence presented in the record today to deny them their renewal. It's very clear, however, that if you continue with all the issues with the young people in your neighbor, you're going to continue to get complaints. Uh, and I don't know quite how uh, you best address that. Ms. Lady mentioned some community mediation program. 
Uh, and that might be a good suggestion for everybody to consider going forward to see if there's a way that you can sit down together without fighting with one another and discuss the issues and see if there's a reasonable way that the community can be satisfied that young people aren't purchasing the wrong things in there. Can I say just one thing? Okay, yes. And Each of you can say one thing. Every one of you, I want to appreciate <laughs> everything, but I want all of you to know that if anything happens to me, my family, I get fire bomb or much uh, uh, anything to us, all of you will have it on record. Because it's getting terrible, and you know that. It's getting terrible. I mean, uh, the young man belongs to a group, and they've been terrorizing us for the last four or five days. But that is a police and, uh, issue, yeah. ma'am. It is really yeah, not the scary. liquor board <laughs> issue. But it's scary, but I have to watch my back. And then they never put the cameras. Why come they never put cameras? I, I think you all need to work with and the local police the officers. They, they fix it now and everything. So, you know, uh, I'm no disrespect to all of you commissioners. I'm very disappointed. I understand that. To go on record, uh, everything is taped. That is happens to me and my family or my home, uh, and, and, and my, my, my son. Then uh, you know what's where, where it comes from. I understand your position on that. Did you want to say one last thing, ma'am? Yeah. I mean, you and you have yeah, had uh, your license renewed, so I'm so not sure you want to rest Wilkins defeat from the jaws of victory. But <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, so I don't even talk to her until she comes yes. to the house uh, into the store to buy Cobra. 40 ounce beer for the husband or the husband can and buy. And that's it. I don't even talk to her. And I understand that there, there may... There's no altercation between us. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't saying there was an altercation between you. I was saying it sounds as though the neighborhood has issues, uh, especially as to young people, mm -hmm. and that maybe, you know, and if, if they're congregating around your place, you're going to get complaints, and so maybe you need to see about that. But uh, let's hear from the other commissioners. So... Um, I, I concur with um, our uh, chair that there hasn't been sufficient evidence of specific problems uh, that are tied to this establishment. I mean, just the general concerns. I hear you. I understand. I mean, I know that you've been here before. I'm sure you'll be back again mm -hmm. for other issues, so I appreciate that. But for this establishment on these issues, not specific enough to justify not renewing the license, so I, I concur in the um, decision to renew the license. So they have to, they do it every year? And do now we need every to hear? Yes, yeah. it's an annual every year. thing. Yep. Okay. We need to hear from one more commissioner. Uh, that's okay. That's quite all right. Ms. Moses, I, yes. I applaud you for, uh, for your work in, in the neighborhood. Uh, I think that's really important. That. I really it do. It a lot to me. No, I really do. I think uh, it, it's a good, it's very good, and your leadership is clearly needed. Um, I also would echo, though, what the chairman had said, and I think um, this is a real opportunity for both the licensee and the community to work together on some of these issues. And I, I take allegations of, um, of tobacco use by minors and the sale of that very, very seriously. And to the, the, to the degree that the licensee can work with the community to address the kind of foot traffic that isn't necessary in front of your establishment, uh, I think that would be tremendously uh, productive. Um, however, uh, as Commissioner Moore and the Chairman uh, have both said, I don't think there is specific uh, and sufficient evidence to demonstrate that uh, the, the establishment is in violation or a renewal is not warranted. So for those reasons, I grant renewal. And thank you all uh, for appearing today and, uh, and offering us your testimony and letting us know uh, how you feel about these matters. So thanks very much. God bless you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And I think we're adjourned for the day. We are. Thank this is part of the record. This is part of the record. This is the petition. Thank you. Yeah. This all stays here. For so long. Not as much. <laughs>